there's something raw about it. It doesn't gloss over the work and go straight to the podium. It's down and dirty. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over Monation's day three, two and or three or four, depending on how many days you were there for. Some of the stuff for Monation's was optional, but let's start off with one of my favorite things to absolutely pick apart, which is the men's panel. We're going to start off with that. On the screen it says, tough question. What actions can I take to overcome my husband's or partner's skepticism about our business? And I'm sure the men, since they're so logical, are going to really just tell it like it is. In years, I've been the project manager for California's uh, leading window and door company. And although I enjoy my job, there's a ceiling financially that I just knew that we were never going to be able to hit. But then uh, along came Monet. And uh, Monet's comp plan has shattered the ceiling that I'd ever be able to earn financially. And has changed our family's life quite a bit and also motivated me down the path of We need more money, so I told that to get to work. <laughs> Go do Monet. Like who I feel like a lot of times it's the wives that get into it and then husbands have to like figure out if they're gonna be supportive or involved in any sort of way. But let's let him continue. Growth and development more so helping me find the Lord this year, which is <laughs> I don't know how I could ever be more grateful for Monet and the Ordinate family because of that. So thank you. Thank you. His wife leading him to his newfound faith is not something new, trend-wise, that we see. But involving the Urdanettas in helping him do that is so strange to me because why are you letting your professionals that we here in the anti mlm community, we on the outside, we we understand that they're not professionals. And he has a big boy job. So is he going to his other job? And are they not talking about that stuff? Because maybe it's not workplace appropriate. Maybe it's not professional. Just because you put on a suit does not make you professional in an MLM. You're not representing your other job right now. You're representing basically your wife in the MLM. Just because you're wearing a suit doesn't mean you're professional or that anyone should listen to you. And I know like these MLM boss babes are typically the ones who like to cosplay as business professionals. We saw a lot of pants suits this year, vests and pant sets. And I, unfortunately, I don't think there was really a whole lot of outfits to talk about this year. I, you know, I feel like they tried, but there was just nothing that was like, okay, I need to put this in a video because these ladies know how to dress. They still knew how to dress. It's just not interesting enough for me to put in a video. Oh, so this is the same question. And then on the screen, this other gal pal puts, it's always so nice to hear from the husbands of some of the top leaders and how they were once skeptics and that skepticism was erased. And now they support their wives. Show them the money. Yes, because all men care about are the numbers because somebody has to, because when you're hemorrhaging money in an MLM, you need to believe that you're going to make it one day. You just need to give it the best five years of your life and then you'll make it to the top 1%. Oh wait, that doesn't happen for everybody? Oh, silly me. I would say, um, I would agree with that and say, yes, show, show your spouse the money. Show them the money. Show them what you're throwing away every month. You can sit here and say, if, if you're a top income earner or you're making above a profit, I can see you proudly going to your husband or your spouse and saying, look at how much I profited because you're, you're smart. You're not completely gone. So you are making a profit and loss statement. And then you are taking it to your husband saying, Hey, look at this. Like we profited. I can understand doing that, but they're giving you this false hope that you'll be able to have this normal conversation with your husband and end it, have it end on a positive light. For most people, if you were in a position like myself, it would not be a fun situation. Lucky for me, a lot of the time I would just break even or sometimes I would lose money, but a lot of times it was just breaking even. So if I was getting my paycheck, it was just paying for the product I paid for previously. But I think you should be transparent with the person that you're with 
like not like if your boyfriend or girlfriend like I feel like that's none of their business really but like if you're in a serious situation like a, a long-term thing yeah I think you should be showing them the money or where it's all going aka your MLM that's a great, that's a great question uh, I would say bring them around other husbands who've been in this business for a while I can assure you guys there's nothing that he thinks that any other husbands previously have not thought I myself was skeptical, and my skepticism was erased after listening to intelligent, ambitious people speaking on their success with this business. Because it wasn't intelligent and successfully said when your wife said it? What do you mean by that? Do you mean like you only listened when other men said it? Your wife talking about and showing you the numbers wasn't enough. Like, notice how you didn't say my wife sat me down and we looked at the numbers? Uh, the first thing to me, I would say, show him the money. If your husband, <laughs> your husband can see the success of all these top, a lot of top leaders, just anybody really that's had some success that would financially benefit your family, then I think he would be on board. And it's my goal to be the number one hype man for my wife and for Team United. All right. <laughs> I'm here to say that I've seen those mountaintops, no, but I've also seen the valleys. And so, while in the valley, it's my goal to get eighty. For most distributors, they're in they're in the valley. That that's where most of them are, struggling every month. And then imagine ranking up, and then the first thing you see next month is that actually you dropped rank, like back to nothing. You're just a distributor. <laughs> And then having to make sure you're going to meet that again to keep your rank. Because if you don't keep the rank, you don't get paid as the rank. It's not like when you get a promotion at your big boy job and then you get to keep it even if every month isn't exactly perfect. You don't like get fired then. And the team back to that mountaintop as fast as possible through encouragement and support. <laughs> but my worst fear was ever holding back. I briefly envisioned a future where her friends went on to crush goals, make millions, get jackets, and drive Cadillacs. And Amy was left in the dust because I did not support her. This was a guilt that I refused. And maybe she should have stayed there. Like, it's okay for people not to succeed in the MLM. There's nothing shameful about that. It's designed for you to fail. You're supposed to fail. You're supposed to not do good. That's the point is just get more people to shove their money in it. It's not made for you to succeed. And at that point, if she was already not doing good, you could have led her to see how maybe this isn't something super sustainable, or maybe this isn't the best option, or maybe she could go back to school or something that would be a better use of her time. And that way she's not preying on other women. I have an old mentor of mine who's been married for 50 plus years. He told me the best advice I've ever received. He said, if she's into it, you better be into it. <laughs> and Ecclesiastes 4 9 reminds us that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they you're, you're gonna see it constantly pop up in this video, but I think it's so funny that they have to proselytize because at the end of the day, they do not believe in their Jeebus the way they claim to or the way they want everyone to think they do. Because otherwise, he would be moving mountains and showing everyone that he's real and doing good things that would make everyone believe that he is real and he's somebody to follow. But he doesn't do jack sh So you have to go out and harass everyone and shove it down their throats by repetition and the lack of ability to get away from this sh so that everyone else will eventually believe too. Or at least think that it's weird that they don't. So they know that they're not in the in crowd. They fall, one will lift up the other. Hey, because we all know you're not getting paid for your labor, so why not help indoctrinate your spouse even more so that they also will be in the trenches with you for no payout for most people. Like they are saying this because they are top boss babes. The majority of people in MLM are not going to be able to sit there and indoctrinate their spouse to help them stay in the business. And I don't think that it's all his fault that his wife didn't succeed in MLM the way her friends did. 
it's not all his fault. Does it help people like rise to my sure in a background kind of way like it's better than the opposite like being badgered every time you're on your phone messaging your boss babes great and then they announced that you can get into debt right when you join the company right when not like normally how you will join the company with money you may or may not have and then be stuck with some products if you're in a company that you you get products when you sign up not like that where they tell you and lead you to believe that oh if you really need to you could sell some of these products to make your investment right back now you can sign up for debt and then pay that off with your regular job like my advice if you watch my videos and you end up joining an mlm anyway i just i, I think it's important that you have both sides of it before you join that's my thing so you can make better informed decisions and not just be caught up in the hoopla. But now they're going to have Klarna as a part of their system on, on their website. So I can't afford it. It's no longer an excuse. Buy now, pay later. Wow. At least in my company when I was in, when I think it was PayPal came out with a similar thing, something like that, you could sign up with PayPal I think corporate even got on their social media and told us to stop. And my uplines told us like, hey, don't be posting stuff about that. Like everyone else is like, don't do that. Uh, Frieda up to spend a little more time with me. So, <laughs> and, and I love overseeing projects that reap returns. And I'm here to say that our events have reaped the best return on our- Our events have reaped the most return. What do you mean? How does that work? Our events have reaped the most return. Is that because that's when the boom happens? That's the same for every MLM. So don't let this dude convince you or make you believe that like just because the boom happens after these events, that that is special to this company. It's not different or special whatsoever. Investment, our time, money, effort. So I assist in logistics planning for our team retreats, local wine and washes, everything. This is a great spot for all husbands to help out. Um, you can help out with the speakers, the PA, the slides, make sure the food's ready, secure the venue, and then get out of the lecture rooms. Hey, and you know what's also good as a husband in MLM? Making those profit and loss statements, even if you're a bottom feeder spouse, like you can make those profit and loss statements and just, I don't know how your spouse is, but figure out a way to gentle approach it figure out a time when to general approach it. it it's okay to do that and be that voice of reason not like i just tell her how it is she don't like it yeah she's not gonna like it you have to understand she is completely gone like the person you knew it, that rationale that was probably there before it's not there anymore she is this whole other person when it comes to this mlm so you have to figure out who that is and how to get to the real her so you guys can talk about if this is actually a good idea for you guys to be doing if that profit and loss statement is not looking really nice something really special the global beauty industry was valued at 511 billion dollars in 2022 is projected to grow to 750 billion by 2032 mm -hmm. imagine if monet can capture a modest one percent of that market share we're a billion dollar industry he's a billion dollar industry. Woo! I'm sorry, I haven't blurred out, but he literally just did this one. Oh, shit. He literally was like, nah, it is predicted to grow. Like, please, sir, it doesn't make it sound better. And nobody, it's not about the individual MLM distributor seeing growth. They're not going to see that kind of growth. That's not what them as a distributor is ever going to drop in a bucket get to. That's not what that is. That is the industry that Monet is in. Not even MLM, the beauty industry. This is people, that's what I would call it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we're a billion dollar industry. We, like trying to connect it back to Monet. Monet is not a billion dollar fucking anything. You will never be either. How can I help my husband or partner become an advocate or champion of our family business? Well, 
real fast, your husband does not need to get involved in the MLM the way you are. They don't need to be a distributor. What they need to do is not really be involved at all. So that if you were on a sinking freaking ship and you were putting hundreds and maybe thousands of dollars into this business and not seeing a return and or profit on that, I would say heavier on the profit part that he can say, hey, this needs to stop. Find something else like we have to stop this look at this profit and loss statement, look at the numbers here. It's not looking good because someone needs to be on the outside and not be completely invested with with the numbers and the logic or the emotional side, which is definitely the heavier side. Uh, But on the screen, it says, these men gave such incredible advice. They all quoted scripture and all talked about Jesus. Great. At a professional event, I don't think MLMers are professional, but at a professional event, we're bringing that up. How is that appropriate? And what the fuck does that have to do with getting people into the business? How can they recruit more? How can they recruit better? How can they find more customers? How should they be marketing their products? How about we have a day, a whole day about compliance? We could have a day about the FTC too. Well, maybe in the same day. I don't know. But talk going on and on about bullshit like this is a bunch of blah, blah, blah. So you feel like you're getting more from these events and you're not. You're walking away with some tchotchkes, smoke up your butt, and you're going to go home, fart out the smoke, and go back to whatever you were doing. Or maybe get a few extra customers and distributors this month. And then after that, when the fire's gone... You're going to be right back to where you were before the event. When asked for advice, one of them said, pray for each other daily. Talking about their wife when supporting their business. We are are just so blessed here. Yeah, I hope they're praying for them to see the light. This takes away so much time from your partner being in one of these things. And if you're not like one of these top boss babes, you're not seeing a, a financial return on this. You're putting all this time and money into this thing that is not like, hey, well, you know what? We were able to uh, put some money towards this thing or that thing. And that's not what's going to happen for most people. Most people are just going to see their spouse sitting there on their phone or on the phone or on a team call. And they're not going to see the money in the bank account changing for the better. Steady. It's church service. Find me a company that you can align with, that when they end the conference, they give all the glory to Jesus. It works. They're a faith-based company too. They had a service at the end when I was in. I had the balls to sit down once I realized I'm I'm a fucking adult. I'm an adult. And actually I'm so exhausted from this event that I don't need to stand longer and like possibly faint from exhaustion, hunger, lack of hydration. And the adrenaline and anxiety that goes on at these events. Like I sat down during the worship service and felt like I felt bad. I felt like I was doing something bad. But I also low key was like, this is kind of a power move because um, you don't have to stand up to worship Jesus. And I always felt like it was wrong to sit down. And actually, it's just fine, even if you're still going to worship Jesus, like do your thing. But like, it's not bad to sit down and do it. It's actually just fine. And it's actually better not to feel like you're passing out just so you fit in with all the other believers. Either way, this is actually a thing I'm the most excited about. Let's go. Let's go. Good morning. (laughs) I don't miss the fake happy positivity pants. I don't miss it at all and you might come to my channel and be like oh my god she's so negative I don't know what to tell you (laughs) like so much of what we talk about is because I disagree with it or because I can see a lot of places where it needs improvement and I because I'm I'm not in either of those control groups I don't have to sit here and package it in a pretty digestible pink pretty feminine package for you I that's not my job to handhold you to get my concepts across so also don't 
look too close at my hands. I dyed my roots today because if I don't, I look like I'm balding. So, because my hair is actually blonde. Not light blonde, but dirty blonde. Okay, now let's look at some stories from the worship service. On the screen it says, my leaders, one up there leading worship and the other front row praising like a real leader would because you're not a good leader or as good of a leader as the believers. And on screen at, like or on stage, we have the queen of the mamacitas. See how you can't get away from it? There's no neutral or spiritually neutral place in this MLM in particular. But they're not shoving it down anyone's throats. No. No, no. You just can't get away from it. On screen on this one, I have no words after the service today, truly. Our company is a company of faith with an optional service after all our events, and today was unlike anything I've ever been to. I've said it before, align yourself with a company that has the same values as you. Yeah, if you're going to get a job with a company, you need to make sure that they involve their religion. Because church and state doesn't exist. And I'm hungry. He doesn't know of any. Does he just not look? I know for a fact it works at least you used to. They're not Monique's not the only faith-based company that does this. Just before we open up God's word, I just want to honor this incredible family. But man, I just love and appreciate who they are. And um, I just know that anytime God gives us a big vision, the bigger the vision, the bigger the opposition. When we face resistance, when we face rejection, when we face actions. You wish. <laughs> there are instances where that is true. You're not facing so much opposition and persecution because you guys just really have something that everyone is so jealous of. That's not. No. No, 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 no. You need all of the people in Monate to believe that. Because that's your job. You're hired by Monate. So obviously the service is going to be sub subconsciously geared towards keeping people in. So you got to tell them stuff like this to blow Mueller smoke up their butt. Uh, these are not signs that we're headed in the wrong direction. More often than not, these are signs that we're headed in the right direction. Can we give some honor or honor is due today for the leadership of the Because you're headed in the right direction. Don't quit. We're doing fine. Everything's fine. We're doing great. People are hating because they're jealous. That's what every winner says. Can we also talk about how unoriginal every pastor sounds on stage? Like, I, there's slight differences, but like, just like MLM, it's always very tired. The cadence is the same. And it's almost like they're completely unaware of that. And it's very uninteresting to listen to. It, on screen, it says, Moni is doing just fine dolls. If it is, then why from every angle, just like the Jeebus stuff, are we reminding everyone that everything's fine? And people hate because because we're actually going through a huge breakthrough. I think if everything was fine, you wouldn't have to do that. You wouldn't have to prove yourself to anyone. Money always does whenever we like get together, you know, and have like events and stuff. They always do a church service and it's, it's optional. Like people don't have to go, but it's really special because it just gives us a chance as. Yeah, you don't have to go. It's just the social pressure. But you don't have to go because then it would be a cult. But it's optional. You don't have to go if you're not like us. Our community to worship and pray. And I'm just so excited. So I am getting ready for that right now. And I have a story to make yet that I'm going to. I have never felt like I needed to go to work and worship with my coworkers. Or like, we should all go to church later. I've never felt that way at any job I've literally ever had. Because that's unprofessional. And I bet if you could get your food from this company, your drinks from this company, your toilet paper that we wipe your butt with, after all that smoke comes out, 
from this company, you could buy your home from this company, you buy your car from this company. Oh, wait, you already can do that. These people would. Because you are financially tied. Sometimes it's you and your spouse tied to the MLM. Your car, not for most people, but theoretically can come from the company. Your hair products, your skincare, and now your makeup can come from the company. Your faith comes from the company. That's not right. Like when they say don't put your all eggs all in one basket, like don't put your whole life around this MLM. The fact that it comes, like everything could come from this MLM and these MLMers would not see a problem with it. They would think, oh my God, this company just thinks of everything. We align on everything. That would be a cult. And as long as they are walking the fine line between blatant cult and, mm, yeah, it kind of seems like a commercial cult, then these people are not, and their husbands who aren't like directly involved are going to be like, I think everything's fine. Updated each day, this tool will display your current paid rank, as well as your key volumes, including your personal volume from customer sales, total group volume, total downline volume, as well as your total organizational permissionable volume. Then, then if they don't have that, then maybe they should. <laughs> I, w I would think that would be good info for them to know. And why are we giving them an, an app? To do it from versus a website like what would actually would be the difference that's just a nothing burger and you're giving them the same thing in a different form and spinning it like they should just be crying on their knees thanking you it's not innovative other mlms they have had an app like this isn't revolutionary they're not the first to do this but I don't think the people in Monet at this conference are either aware of that or care because it's going to be so much different and so much better and so much cooler and so much more original and so much more thoughtful if it comes from Monet. Yes, and they had the gala party. I don't remember if I included the clip or not, but there was this uh, distributor talking about how they're going to completely transform the ballroom. And I'm like, for what? Like, possibly how, how much can they even transform that room? Like, I don't even know. But they came up with a Gatsby or 20s themed party. And so the, here, here's a glimpse of what happens at the private toast. There is a, um, hopefully, a paid model wearing this dress with this fixture on it where everybody can grab their champagne to do the toast. Because if you'll remember in my last video, the badge, you on, on your badge, you can have a little ribbon that says that you got to do the toast. Because not that it actually fucking matters or it's something special, it's or, or exclusive really. You get to signal to other people that you were a part of it and they weren't. So that it's actually a way for them to instill shame and motivate you to do better so that next year you get to do the champagne toast with the CEO and you get a ribbon. So now you can shame other people into probably working harder even though they probably won't. Next, I want to show you this girl's notes app. She decided to share this publicly. So let's talk about what she thought was worth jotting down in her notes. Right at the top, you can allow people's hurtful comments to build you up or tear you down. But you are in control of what you choose to accept in your into your mind and in your heart. Revolutionary. Leader or upline? Yeah, you don't want to be someone's upline. You want to be someone's leader. Did I guess right? like I did. Leader. Inspire. Sir. Demonstrate. Upline. The one who sponsored you into the business. No, you don't want to do that. You want to be personal. You want to be a good leader. How to build. Build people over. It'll lead to building your business. Right. Because it's not about the products, is it? It's about emotionally tying yourself to people and a business that is not emotionally tied or valuing your existence at all once you cease to be a good little number that you are. Teach leaders to be leaders. The pace of the leader is the pace of the pack. You see how these are just like one-liner statements? Like none of this is actually something of value that these people can go home 
and put into action because they're not really like, is this what they're taking away from conference? Just motivational quotes. They could have Googled that. They could have hopped on any team call any day of the year and gotten these things. Grit. Think of the Buffalo. This is an entrepreneur farm. You guys are animals, cattle. That's how they think of you. Don't be like a cow, not that kind of cattle. Be a buffalo. You're not, you're not a fucking buffalo. You're not getting paid to act like the buffalo that they tell you that you should be. You don't get paid for that. So don't do it. You would not be rewarded for that kind of dedication. Something else that happens at these bigger events is the little people, like um, how I was, maybe you were too, meet the people they essentially consider to be celebrities in the business. So like the, the, the top one to three percenters, they get all excited and treat them like royalty. And I did too. When I saw my favorite top boss, babe, I had to go talk to her and I was crying, crying. I was so excited, embarrassing. And now she reads tarot on TikTok live. This song had my heart in pieces. I'm caught up in this holy moment and I never want to leave. There needs to be more discussion by the believers, not me, but I, I like, I feel like I already do enough without making entire videos on it. Cause I, I just don't want to, it can be really exhausting and insane because there's one thing that believers like to do. It's get easily triggered to defend their Jeebus in the sky. And I'm like, if he's so great, he doesn't need defending. Like, he doesn't need you to be in my comment section proselytizing for him. He doesn't need you to do that. And you make yourself look bad. Like, you're not pulling me to change my mind. And you're not setting a good example that would make anyone want to follow you too. Unless, of course, they already think like you. And they're also in their victim mindset that... They're being persecuted because they came to my video and didn't like that I'm not hand-holding them with their faith. Okay, what I need you guys to acknowledge more is the subliminal messaging, which to me isn't subliminal now. It's quite obvious. But when we're putting things on the screen and you're indoctrinating yourself saying, I'm caught up in this holy moment, I never want to leave. At your MLM conference, at the church service in the MLM conference, and you can't even get away from anyone, MLM, because you're with all your fellow MLMers, your Monate girls, and there's also MLM girlies on stage helping lead this service. Like, you cannot get away from anything. There's no church and state. There's no neutral area. Like, it's there, there, there's not supposed to be at these events. There's no place for you to truly rest and get away from it all unless you have a hotel by yourself oh but a lot of people actually can't do that because they can't afford to do that so they have to be going back to their hotel to rest but there's a bunch of other people there too exhausting to me even if it's fun which and i i think most of it was fun rather than exhausting but the exhaustion was there and no i don't think it was worth it i never want to leave monate is what they should have just said there okay here's something so interesting like i think we were all wrong guys Monate makes your hair fall out? That's really not true. Oh. So I guess I guess that lawsuit never happened where people's hair was falling out. I guess that was just made up. That was a lie. A bunch of people got together to lie and file a lawsuit against your company. Because it's just not true, right? Like what? Like are you that unaware? No. But the people in this picture, uh, one, two, three of them are top boss babes. <laughs> They are aware of the lawsuit. It's interesting. Really bizarre. Really weird. Like, who even says that? Who even made that up? Very odd. We will never understand. Doesn't make any sense. Sorry you heard that. We are very confused, too. This reminds me of when we were taught to gaslight our customers. And obviously, uh, no one who's still in it works would feel that way. But we were taught to say things like, I don't know why whatever product they bought isn't working. Did you drink enough water? What were your eating habits like? Were you exercising? Did you get enough sleep? Okay, it's not going to work if you don't get enough sleep. 
okay, it's not going to work if you don't drink enough water. Reminds me of that. So that customers feel like it's their fault, not the fact that the products uh, are not living up to the claims. Here's something so sad. This top boss babe, and I've reacted to some of her stuff before, she missed Eric Worre's private jet. Oh, oh no. She missed the private jet. What's she gonna do? Oh, because she had to go to the church service. She gave up a private jet for a church service. That's just how humble she is. That's just what a God-fearing woman she is. She gave up the private jet. Don't, don't pay attention to the fact that she had to jot that down for all of us to see. A flex on her downline because they were invited to the private jet. That's not signaling, signaling that her downline is a bunch of losers. In her eyes, I don't think they're losers. But when you're top boss, babe, you know your downline is a bunch of peons not making anything in this company. I got to watch my leader accept an award for earning $15 million in commissions. And she's actually earned over $17 million. She took out a payday loan to get started. Wow, that's the second thing, encouraging debt. It's so obvious. Like, how is that something to brag about? Like, keep that to yourself. Like, I know MLMs should be more transparent, but like, if you're trying to get people to join the MLM and people are already skeptical, keep that shit to yourself, maybe. Like, because nobody's going to join. And brought her husband home from work. Have you ever seen a man without a plan? Without work? It's not a good sign. It's not good. It's not great. And how many of these husbands actually want to come home and do fucking nothing? I would go crazy. That's why I do this. Because um, number one, I really enjoy it. And number two, I think it's really important for someone to offer a little bit different of a perspective because I think a lot of times it gets all mushy together. And we just don't have enough agnostic people who are in an MLM talking about this. Sh Ex pick me. Like we, we need more. That's why I'm here. That's what I'm here to provide. She is humble, kind, and God-fearing woman. See how you can't get away from it? It's literally fucking everywhere. It was such a special moment to watch, cry through, as blank and blank so humbly accept this award and pour their hearts out into others while accepting it. They are here to serve others and have helped thousands of women and families. We could change that to preyed on thousands of women and families encouraging thousands of uh, women to exploit their children's image for the MLM's gain. That's how we should word that. Monation's 2024 in the books and 2025 tickets already secured. Vegas, here we come. So I guess they will be plaguing Sin City. So interesting of a location for such a faith-based company. Interesting. Not only did you spend hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars to be at this convention, that was, uh, unfortunately, I think really boring. The Probably the most exciting part would be what you and your friends made of it. A lot of times it is. Like probably the food would be the best part. And getting dressed up and being cute. Because the value coming from the MLM itself isn't really there. And now, I'm not sure if it was just like you sign up for a wait list or something for the tickets. But if you were at this conference, you already spent all this money. And now you're all hyped up primed and ready so they know they can expect you to want to buy next year's ticket so that you can contribute to your own sunk cost fallacy and keep putting in more money right away because now this will hold you accountable to stay in and reach your goals when for a lot of people all it's going to mean is that you're going to stay in being a bottom feeder go to conference believe in yourself get reinvested and the cycle will continue if someone doesn't pull you out or if you don't fizzle out. Most of Monate women are moms and to support these hardworking women with their children is huge. I don't know if that's true if most women in Monate are moms. I, I don't know about that. I do know that most people in Monate are women though. I think, I think we can all agree on that. And how gross because it actually turns out they canceled the childcare. Because there are only 20 people. I'm not confirming that that's true. But that is what I'm hearing from. This gal pal that I mentioned in my previous video. I'm going to put her video on the screen. And she's going to explain it better than I can. So a little birdie has told me. That it was allegedly again in my opinion experience. Not the hotel having an issue. But that only 20 people signed up. To have their kids 
get taken care of. And because that's it, that signed up, they canceled. Could you imagine? Like, y'all couldn't stay open for the 20 people that were bringing their kids. Now you got 20 people that you're going to force sit into a room watching their kids while trying to pay attention. I, I honestly would leave. I'd go to Disney. Bye. <laughs> the magnitude of helping other women grow their business. I'm going to help you see what I see. So here we have you. And then you have all these people, these people that you signed up. And then then these pipe people signed up all of these people, right? So imagine it's you as a mom exploiting your child's image for your, your company's gain that you're not going to see. They're going to benefit more than you. And then all these women are going to do the same thing. Not weird at all. Not, that's totally normal to encourage moms to do that. That's what I see when I see shit like that. Look at this. This is graphics for stupid people. When I say these MLMs are playing in your face like you're dumb, it's because they think you're dumb. Because they've already got you completely where they want you emotionally. And now they put stupid, simple shit on the screen for you. It's going to be, oh my God, this business really is this simple. I'm overcomplicating it. It's just so simple. You didn't need to pay a bunch of money to get on a plane, pay for a hotel, food, and airfare, like to, to be told stupid people graphics. Like what successful people do? Say yes, tell the world, figure it out. This is 100% accurate is what someone captured this. Like give me a fucking break. This is not groundbreaking nothing that i have seen from this conference this is all stuff that i'm finding from people's like posts on instagram and stories publicly none of this is groundbreaking none of this is new information none of this is awesome none of this sets them apart from the mlm i was in or any other one i've seen really this does not say we care about you and we're so thoughtful like mlmers like to think this company is a fellow homeschool mom, putting Jeebus in the center of her life and her business, leading us, sharing with us her journey to success inside this business and the change it has made in her life. You know, I think they're really hitting the Jeebus stuff extra hard this year. Is it just me? Because I feel like I'm seeing a lot more than I did in previous years. And I wonder why that might be. Here we have another picture of Eric Worre, I never trust anyone or any company that has not gone through adversity. No one that lives a perfect life. At Eric Worre, one of the most successful people in the industry and multimillionaire, I'm talking net worth of $15 million. I think he mean, I think this person means net worth, but they're fine, right? This isn't at all speaking to what they're going through. What they're going through is because of their actions. Their actions are making them look bad. Not people, not people's reaction to their negative action. Their original negative action is the problem. It's not adversity. Like, stop saying it like you're being persecuted. All of this is because of what y'all did. Everyone has a busy life. Even the people doing this. This business is built 15 minutes at a time. I'm so sick of hearing that. Hearing MLMers say, it's the, you can do 15 minutes at a time while you're sitting in line to pick up your kids. You can work this business. Yeah, sure you can. I worked it a lot more than anyone I actually knew. And it works. Guarantee it. I worked the most. It was never a question of the quality of my work, the amount of time I spent doing it, my motivation, my spirituality. It was never anything I did not enough of or not the right way. I tried it all different ways and it didn't work. And it's not my fault. It's not supposed to. And 15 minutes at a time, that's not going to work for most people either. That's just a nothing saying to make people sit there and be like, oh, well, now that it's been oversimplified for me, now I really should just work this in 15 minute increments and then stop the clock and then work for another 15 and then stop the clock. That's not going to make you more successful. An inherently flawed system. You don't build a business, you build people and then people build the business. Wow. Game changer. Thanks so much. At least they put the person they quoted this from on there. Zig Ziglar. Wow. 
yes, such a favorite. Also, I already filmed this video, so if I seem super over it, I know the first <laughs> the first part you guys are already saw was a uh, pretty. I was over these bitches, you know, and now I'm having to film this whole first part again. So I'm like ultra over these bitches. <laughs> but in the end of the video, I think I was losing my voice. So I do sound now I'm losing it again because I mentioned it. I literally sound like I'm growling. So sorry. And I think this is really telling the saying on the screen that the entire idea behind MLM is to transform who you are at your core and exploit it for their gain. Because instead of teaching you how to do your job and do it well, like a normal job, they have to get into your entire, seep into your entire personal life. You need to get to people's emotions, get to them spiritually, emotionally, subconsciously and consciously you need to get to them visually you need to appeal to whatever they have going on you need to be the every answer to their every problem that's how you get people in MLM it's not like a normal job <laughs> it is more insidious after some wise spiritual counsel and conviction I decided to remove my post how would my response reflect on the gospel would it turn people to it or away from it I appreciate spiritual friendships that call us higher. And this is apparently from her friend that says, but it's not about us or our name, our reputation, but his. All for his name's sake. When we start to do these things, it's because our namesake has taken over. It ain't easy, that's for sure. And this is a response to the tea I posted in my other video, the girly pop who left went to Oliveda or Olive Tree, whatever the f*** it is. And then she's been dropping little, little tea spills here and there about Monique because she was a top boss babe in there and now she has since taken it down I guess oh well I already screen recorded it and personally I think that this is a great show of the fact that these people do not believe like they try to show that they believe like they think they're putting on this great show uh, to demonstrate their belief and actually it's so incredibly obvious and they put it right there in our stories he, your your Jeebus should be able to stand on his own two feet and defend himself he doesn't need you to do it he doesn't need you to direct other people right because he's all knowing all powerful on all, all that good stuff right so why are you on here talking about other people's faith number one and number two, you can still talk about it. It just proves for you not to be as faithful of a follower as you like to think you are. And it makes you look like a giant hypocrite. Because you will do the same thing in your MLM. Even with other believers will see you doing something wrong within the same faith and call it what you called it. None of you have the discernment to do anything. You guys, our VIP program was already amazing, but they're making it even better. Points can now be used towards full-size products. And like, they weren't already. <laughs> this is like their app. Like, you didn't have access to that information already. Oh, you did. Oh, now you can just find it somewhere else too. You see how they're giving you more blah, blah, blah. It's how when MLMs give you so many tchotchkes because they're not actually providing you anything of value it's just making you think you're getting all this stuff all this trash all the stuff that's going to fill up landfills or fill up your time or fill up your phone but it's all empty just like the men's panel and just like all of these speeches and i'm not trying to take away from the hardships that these people do go through and exploit their own stuff going on i'm not saying those aren't real events but unfortunately when you were in MLM as long as I was and you listen to it constantly while you're exposing these tactics that people don't always know what to look for, you become kind of numb to it. And some of it you have to know is inflated to make the story better, to tug at more hard strings, and things can easily snowball out of control. So while it's important <clears throat> to have compassion and understanding and sympathy for other people, it can be hard when you're using it for financial gain and it doesn't directly benefit or ease whatever that cause was that they're talking about. Grit. Sure. It's a synonym of words like fortitude, metal, determination, tenacity, perseverance, and toughness. 
but there's something raw about it. It doesn't gloss over the work and go straight to the podium. It's down and dirty. It's the slog. <laughs> the crap you have to sludge through. The sweat, salt, and tears at the dust in your stairs. Jesus Christ, there's something appealing in the rough edges of the word. If you've got grit, you gnash your teeth together, clench your fists, put your head down and stare straight ahead. Like the buffalo. <laughs> like, is that what I'm saying? Am I supposed to be motivated like this? This is so intense for what you're actually doing, which is free labor for an MLM. Free labor for the marketing campaign. No, no one's paying you for the marketing campaign. The people who are putting together the actual ads that you see on like Monate's Instagram, those, those people are getting paid for the marketing campaign. You're not, you're doing it for free. Like you're doing an excessive amount actually for free. Not just like if you genuinely like something and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I love this Revlon lipstick. I don't make any money from it. I think I got this on clearance. That's where I get most of my makeup. So I don't expect to get paid from that because I'm not doing a bunch of free labor. I'm just saying that I like something because somebody else might be looking for the same thing and I don't feel the need to be paid for it because I'm not going to put a bunch of work into it. And a lot of times, like I'm, I, I'm on, I'm shedding the skin of being a pick me. Okay. I started shedding it when I was like, 24 25 and I was just slo slaving off talk about slog okay and I'm figuring out how to do hair and makeup and nails and stuff like that but I don't need to go make a bunch of content for free so I can be convinced I'm a business owner and feel good about myself and feel like I I have the drive and I have the grit I had the dr grit I had the drive I put in the work I probably put in more work than my uplines did for nothing because I wasn't good enough at manipulating people at the end of the day I wasn't good enough at it and I didn't have a big audience and I didn't know how to come off correctly like a, most of my short form content and my content from back then is like literally uncanny valley like it's so weird I don't blame anyone for not wanting to join my business like why would you you do not need grit to sell beauty products online and make Instagram reels. You don't need grit for that. You have to decide if you actually enjoy doing shit like that for free. The Great Gatsby. Oh yeah, so they had their little event they transformed the venue for it was a Great Gatsby themed event, which was really a bunch of hoorah rah nothing burger. I don't even want to get into it. And I kind of feel bad, you guys, because I feel like every other year there were like super cute outfits, but this year, I, even with this event, nobody's outfit was super impressive and that's probably just my taste blank sharing her beautiful journey of being the healing feminine for her family and how this business has given her the financial freedom to heal from trauma talk about chronically online and we're just gonna take that and shove it into our business huh interesting so let's use all our buzzwords and get people even more invested and seem like the company's really with it, huh? That's what we should be doing. And you know, here, not that buzzwords don't have actual meaning. It's just, you can see what's going on here. They really are just trying to keep you interested in any way they can. And honestly, if you know how they come up with a bunch of different names for MLMs, Buzzword marketing would be an accurate one. And can we stop bringing up so much trauma at these events? Everyone you meet in an MLM is not a fucking underdog. Like there is something wrong with us in America. And we just love an underdog. Like I think it's in the films that we started watching when we were children. And it's all about the underdog. We can make it. Them. Did you hear about dot dot dot? Nope. Too busy helping mamas make money selling shampoo. Mic drop, so cool, so cool. You just shut down all the haters, girl. Unless, unless you did hear about everything. You do hear about these things. These MLMs, the, the chats have so much drama. And even if you hear top leaders say, I, I don't, I don't allow drama in my team. They probably have the most drama. <laughs> and that's just real. But Monate's just fine. Is it a smaller event that they've had in the past several years? Mm-hmm. 
but they're fine, right? Hmm. And they have to keep reminding you that they're fine. Because they're fine, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Fifteen kids between them. My friend Blank had 66 Instagram followers, was five months postpartum with twins, while chasing two other toddlers and going for a huge rank. I think that there is a special place in hell, uh, if you believe in that place. Let's say it's real. I think there's a special place there for even women and MLMs who prey on pregnant and postpartum women. And I can't get super into that because if you guys, if you guys have been on my channel, you know that is a hot button issue for me. But I think this is honestly one of the most disgusting things that I can see. And I know these women aren't going to see it this way. They're going to see me as a hater. They're going to see me as a naysayer. But when you are trying to market to postpartum and pregnant women, they already have so much emotional shit going on that honestly... This is could seem like the perfect thing for them because obviously mo- most women, I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, want to be home with their kids. Like, yeah, they want to sleep, but like when they're babies and they're new, they want to be with them. Blank had me in tears. She talked about how we will all walk through storms in life and it's how we approach them. Think cow versus a bull. This took me straight back to my breast cancer diagnosis. Why? Why? So, like, everyone is just dropping their personal shit. And not, like, if they were regular content creators who genuinely, like, build their platform off of, like, talking about their experience and how they got through it and are genuinely helping people. That's not what they're doing. At the end of the day, what they want is for people to join their MLM. That's what it is. They can disguise it under all of these other things and make all this other non-MLM related content in the hopes that they will trickle into the MLM some way, somehow. Blank, be the bison, not the cow. Go head first, running as fast as you can like an idiot. Oh my god, this is like obvious cheap brainwashing tactic right here. If your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. And here I thought when I was in at works, we came up with that on our own. Rats. Keep going. Don't quit. (laughs) Everything's fine. Keep going. I didn't want to do this on my own. I didn't want to succeed on my own. The hearts of our community, the culture, truly just want everyone to feel loved, seen, worthy. Right. Right. Because it's an MLM, the fakery, the quackery, they, they, it's because it's an MLM. You're okay succeeding on your own if you have a real company and you have real employees under you getting paid for showing up to work and doing their job. That is also you guys winning together. It just doesn't involve the insidious levels that MLM stoop to. Well, if you're not winning, I'm not winning. Right, because your paycheck is directly dependent on me buying products every month and me trying to get my mom and aunt to buy stuff. But then when they stop ordering stuff, I need to find something, somebody else and get their mom and their aunt to buy. And then when they stop, they need to find their best friend to, to buy and, and their aunt and grandma to buy. And it's a never-ending Ferris wheel. And that's why they, they have to define grit for you and put these visuals for idiots on the screen because you didn't know these things already and you needed it uber simplified for you the love we have for y'all if i could sum up the past six months it would simply be faithful faithful to what god has called you to you didn't run you ran fiercely through a storm led by the way for so many we love y'all something fierce bring on the next do you see how this is more this the undertone of this is don't quit Weather the storm, don't quit. (laughs) We're actually shaking in our boots. (laughs) Don't leave. (laughs) Our paychecks are relying on you. No one wins in this business alone. That's why nobody talks about the affiliate side of Monet. That's why nobody talks about it. They talked about when they dropped it and that was it. And maybe they use it as their combat against the anti-MLM community like look we you don't have to build a team right but you're not going to make the real money 
the real money is, is when you build a team with like-minded people. They put stuff on sale for the audience. It'll be on sale soon for our customers and partners. And I'm assuming this was for one of the products that they dropped. Because who is the true customer in an MLM? Is it your grandma? It's you, the distributor. Who's more excited about this product launch? You or your grandma that you force to buy stuff every month? Huh? Normal people flipping through your page aren't super jazzed about your MLM product. You are though. That's why you're excited to be in line to order something. The fake scarcity of it all and the corporate side of things is doing it to you. It's from the top down. Loved watching Blank be inducted officially into the Million Dollar Club. Love that her hubby quoted scripture in his speech. But they're not shoving it down anyone's throats at these events. Mm -mm. You just can't get away from it. All right, and I want to show you this next video. And this comes from an Instagram page called MLM Exit. Awesome page. Funny, informative, knowledgeable anti-MLM stuff. Go check that out. But let's look at a clip that I found from her page. I'm just going to leave this one here. I'm going to blur out the names, obviously, because that's what my that's my policy on my page for the most part. So. so you can do one of two things. You can re-sign up, use a different email address, and then whenever you use your social, change the last number so it doesn't show up as your old social. Call in, cancel your other account. And I would use your husband's name if you can. And then in a couple of months, try to change your social back to, I think it's six months. Change it back to the original social before you're going to get a 1099. And that way they don't flag it and see that you had two different accounts. The thing that um, just put up, like, yeah, like we all knew that. Like, you didn't need to use a dead person's social security number. You could just use any random number and it would work to sign up <laughs> any number so gross um yeah detailed conversations about how to commit social security fraud recording she actually said it and sent it to somebody and there were rumors i remember it goes back a while i think i'm not completely positive um, most people knew that she was detailing social security fraud. And so, yeah, th hey, thanks for putting her link in this. Thank you for posting that. Yeah, it's insane. And it's a felony and it's fraud. Yeah, she was in a team call or in a team chat and is on a voice note detailing to people how to commit social security fraud. Because as we all know, when you sign up as a market partner for Monate, you have to give them your social security number. So fraudulent social security numbers would mean that you could try sign up people fraudulently under you. And yeah, so allegedly, sounds like her, but allegedly that's her on the, uh, the voice note. And I've known her long enough to know that's her. And I've heard enough stories to know it's her. Um, but yeah, that's kind of crazy. But she's not the only one. There's a lot of people that have committed fraud. And there's been a lot of people that have been suspended and fined over the years for committing fraud. And, and I'm going to read the stuff that's on the screen. So it was true, but old information. Yes, I got in huge trouble. I did, however, go back to the girl and tell her something, something, don't do it. We have something right away and they aren't sharing that. At first, I wasn't thinking anything of it because when my mom signed me up in my first company, she had my social security wrong. And I found out almost a year later and I was so worried and compliance was like, no, it's okay. We will just fix it. So dumb. And they didn't think it was a big deal, but I immediately regretted it as soon as I sent it. It gets brought up every single year by the same hater. So it's not shocking to me. It's out again. It was in 2017 and that clip was from a video that I also covered from the first rep of Monate 
her husband is the one who was making those accusations against her. Okay, here's another Instagram page. I mentioned her in my first video, but you guys need to go check this girl out as well. Please note for your reference, any post that has the mention of hair loss, regardless of what it is referring to, we will always ask this to be removed when there is a reference to Monet when there is a reference of Monate products in the same post. The reason for this is that our products have not been scientifically proven to grow hair. However, we understand that each individual's experience is different to another. With this being said to a new prospect, it can be misleading, which is why this post was highlighted. While we understand it impossible to review every MP socials, we do our best to cover as much as we can and provide educational points in the hope that this will trickle out into downlines. We appreciate your cooperation and wish you continued success in building your Monate business. Sincerely, Monate compliance so their compliance is lazy <laughs> is what that tells me they're not going to go through and verify if their distributors are representing the company the company's values what the company believes they're not going to actually go out and see if people are representing the company how they should be according to compliance you have to make a report for compliance to do anything is what this sounds like to me and i think that is an important distinction to make our products have not been scientifically proven to grow hair. Yeah, so you shouldn't be saying that. So you could say other things like what we've heard them usually say, but if you, there are claims that MLM reps should not be making. And they just keep going because, like we're seeing here, compliance is it's just hoping that it'll have a trickle-down effect. This is another screenshot that she posted, which looks like it is from a certain boss babe who blocked me, which is shocking because I wouldn't think that most of, well, any top boss babes I'm talking about know who I am because I don't use their names because I don't want people to go like interact and attack them or anything. Sorry, I'm growling. <laughs> oh my God. I know they sent a lot of messages, but why does Blank constantly get on her Insta stories and talk about you? She was essentially insinuating that you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. I don't understand how she claims to be a Christian, but gets on her Insta stories and consistently talks down on the people at her old company. This is talking about the girl when I said, do you guys want to hear some tea or a bad speech? That's the tea that I was telling you about this is the girl who's in oliveda olive tree who fucking knows what they like to be called sorry i just feel so bad after everything you've been through in the last couple months to still have this person posting stories about you well maybe some of it's true <laughs> because they know each other some of it might be true and you can't just label people as haters when they leave because they start exposing the shit that you do i don't know what's true and what's not but a lot of this could be true and probably is true somewhere. So I think we should give it, you know, healthy consideration. When you live rent free in someone's head so badly they don't know how to stop, y'all, she has problems. I have nothing else to say. If you're still following her and engaging with her, you're a part of the problem. And no harm, no foul if you unfollow or block me. Yeah, she doesn't mind. That's why she made this post. She doesn't care. All right, so that is all I have from Monations 2024. If you liked this video, give it a little like, see poo. If you have commentary to share with the class, leave that down below. And if you super like this video, share it with your besties. And make sure you are subscribed so you get to see all of my videos. Thank you guys again, and I will see you in the next one.